Hello, it's Saturday the 8th of August. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Ali Lang's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening, Lee Hee Ho, the widow of former South Korean President Kim Dae-jung, is back in Seoul after wrapping up her humanitarian trip to North Korea. There had been speculation she might meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un during her stay, but that never materialized. Choi Sun starts us off. Despite having been invited by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, the former first lady neither had a chance to meet nor received a message from him during her four-day stay. Likely pressured by anticipation, her trip might break the impasse between Seoul and Pyongyang. Yi Hee Ho and her delegation stressed that she had traveled to the north as a civilian. I was not assigned any official duties during my visit to North Korea, but with the sense of duty, I finished off my trip following the spirit of the two Koreas' June 15th joint declaration. The June 15th declaration is an inter-Korean agreement to work together to achieve unification and to resolve humanitarian issues after a summit between Yi's late husband and former South Korean President Kim Dae-jung and late North Korean leader Kim Jong-il in the year 2000. The 92-year-old former first lady who was interested in supporting mothers and children in the North is known to have spent most of her time delivering her personally woven mufflers and medical products to a women's hospital, a children's hospital and orphanages. While holding hands with children at a nursery and orphanage in Pyongyang, I realized we must not pass down the two Koreas' pain of division to our future generations. As for possible explanations to why the North Korean leader didn't meet Yi, experts in the South say it reflects Kim Jong-un's passive attitude towards thawing relations with Seoul. Experts also note that the South Korean government did not deliver any messages through Yi, saying that her trip was a personal one. It's also likely Pyongyang was not overly impressed with the group that accompanied the former first lady as its members were not actively involved in the historic June 15th declaration. Choi Yu-san, Arirang News.